to me. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi everyone. Good evening. Thanks for joining us this evening. We, we're quite honoured that you've all decided to give up an hour and a half of your time to be with us tonight. Mm. So, And I trust that you found fine tonight uh, worthwhile. It's a very, very important time that we're going through at the moment. It's, as you probably know in your personal lives, there's a lot of transformation, change taking place individually, but also collectively. And tonight we're going to focus a lot on the collective energy and what we can do in these times of global crisis. And um, those of you who know me and my teaching, my stand um, back point is always presence. So I thought we'd start this evening by accessing a certain level of presence within us. I'm sure that you've all got uh, things going on in your head right now. You've probably had maybe some challenges today, whatever. And um, so let's just spend a few minutes just centering ourselves into, into the present moment. So just, you might want to shut your eyes. You don't have to, but you might want to shut your eyes. And if any of you are joining, um, if any of, anybody joins as we start this, just join in. So let's just center ourselves in our body. You know, our body is such a wonderful gift of presence because our body is always here. Our body is always aligned with life and life is always in the present moment. The only problem we really have is the thoughts which take us away from the reality of now. Our thoughts take us away from the physical body and when we do that, we put the body under strain. We compromise our immune system. We diminish our intelligence. So let's for a moment take a deep breath into our body, right the way down into your belly button. Deep, deep breath in, all the way in. And then alongside, just sigh it out. Sigh it out. And as you do that, relax your shoulders. So let's all try that again. Take a deep breath into your belly button, blowing your tummy up like a big ball. And then a long sigh out, a long, long sigh out. Let it all go. Relax your neck muscles, your shoulders. Let it all go. Just relax. Another deep breath in, right down to your belly button. And this time, take it right down to your toes. Right down to your toes. Fill your legs. And then breathe it out. Let it go. And just see if there's any tension anywhere in your body. And just relax that. You might want to breathe into that particular area as well. Relax your forehead, your scalp, relax your cheek muscles, relax your fingers and your toes. And feel what it feels like to be alive this evening. See if you can feel the aliveness in your left hand. Bring your awareness fully into your left hand. You may feel a sort of tingling in your left hand. And now bring your awareness into your right hand. Again, see if you can feel the tingling in your right hand, the life that allows you to touch, to move, that sits in your right hand. And now become aware of both of your hands at the same time. Bring your awareness simultaneously into both your hands. And bring your awareness into your shoulders at the same time, your arms, your legs, your feet. Feel, if you can, simultaneously the life in every single cell in your body vibrating joyfully in this moment. Become aware of everything you can hear. Maybe there's a ticking of a clock. Maybe there's a dog barking. Maybe there's some rustle of 
the wind and some trees. Maybe there's faraway voices. Or maybe there's stillness. Listen very carefully. And see what the furthest, faintest sound is that you can hear right now. And now become aware of who and what is listening. To listen, to truly listen, you have to become very, very still inside. If you're making too much noise in your head, you cannot truly listen. And as you become still, you become the stillness. And you become aware that it's actually the stillness that listens. And the realization is that you are that stillness. Into which all the thoughts, all the emotions, all the activities of your circumstances come into. But that stillness is always there, always present. It cannot get bigger, nor can it be threatened. It holds all of your experiences. And you are that. That which can never be threatened. That's your true essence of being. While the human mind and activities go on around it. Being is always centered in presence. When you know that, then you experience the reality of love. So now take a deep breath in right down to your belly button again all the way and a sigh out and as you sigh just release any more tension in your neck or your shoulders just let it go in your arms take another deep breath in blowing your tummy up like a big ball now right down to your toes and a long sigh out one last breath in blowing your tummy up like a big ball right down to your legs and now up into your shoulders and up into your head as well fill your whole body to bursting point and sigh it all out. Ah. And gently when you're ready, open your eyes. And as you open your eyes, just become aware of how you feel. How do you feel inside right now? Do you feel a bit calmer maybe, a bit more peaceful? That's because you're connected with your true essence instead of the mind-made story in your head. I hope you enjoyed that. And we're going to end this evening with a, a beautiful guided um, visualization meditation that uh, Michelle has for us. So hang around till the end. Yeah, great. Welcome everybody that's joined us. Thanks John, that was really lucky. It's such a relief hey, to just stop and for a moment not have media coming at us. This is media, but it's different. Um, so the reason we're doing this tonight, as you probably know, is that there's a major, huge meditation tomorrow morning at quarter to five, South African time. And the reason, one of the reasons for that uh, meditation that we're all getting together with, for, um, and hopefully it's going to be global, so everybody will be doing it at the same time, is that at that moment um, we have a, an alignment between two planets. So, should I just shoot into that yeah, straight sure away? That, yeah. So, um, for those of you who haven't joined us on this platform before, you won't m necessarily know about it. Um, but John and I have been doing a few live calls and I've been explaining the astrological weather. So, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but the conjunction, which means two planets coming together, um, that's happening right now as we speak, comes exact to the degree tomorrow morning, our time at uh, 4.06 actually. So it's not an event, a lot of people are seeing it as an event, as a one-time event, it's not that. Um, astrology is waves of energy, that's what it actually does. It's, 
it's it's connecting energy it's not it's a symbolic art um, the planets don't cause things to happen we respond to their movements um, but what happens when two major planets like Pluto and um, Jupiter come together is that there's like an opening there's a, a, a whoosh of energy if you like so that's why it's actually being um, scheduled for tomorrow morning so just to backtrack a little bit um, last year most astrologers that were saying anything about this year were saying well get ready fasten your seat belts because something's going to happen this year um, I did a number of talks on the winds of change <clears throat> last year which was basically foreseeing what was coming up even though I'm not what they call a mundane astrologer which is somebody who watches climate and countries and things like viruses, um, we could all see that there was definitely something happening. Um, the two major players that we were looking at were Pluto and Saturn, which come together once every 37 to 30, 38 years. And their coming together is usually, usually coincides with a major, major global event. So the First World War was one, uh, the end of the Second World War, uh, Vietnam was another, the, um, the economic crash, the Reagan recession in the 80s was the last one. So they, they usually coincide with that. And this one's no exception, um, simply because the two are coming together again, and this time they've been joined by Pluto and Mars, I mean by Jupiter and Mars. So the energy of it is bigger. So if we look at the planets that are involved, we've got Jupiter, We've got Pluto, we've got Saturn, and we've had Mars running through the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn is the sign that's associated with society, with, with, um, with institutions, with governments, with banking systems, with anything um, that's structured, that's Capricorn. So we've got all this planetary energy coming together in Capricorn, um, and which is why people were seeing a possible world war, or a possible economic crash. So I suppose in a way you could see this virus as a war of sorts, um, but I think it's more than that. Um, so when you look at, just to give you an idea of what, what you're looking at here, you're looking at Saturn, which basically rules structures, systems, um, it's the maintainer of systems, it's, um, it's about karma. It's, the karma, it's the planet of karma. And this, I see this as a great big, huge karmic club, for want of a better word. Um, it's, it's time for this to happen, for us to catch a wake up. Um, its principal energy, Saturn's principal energy is one of limitations, lessons. Um, it's a limiting force and it, it kind of forces us to grow up. It's grow up. That's what Saturn does. Um, the shadow side of it is cold and heartless. Um, Pluto, on the other hand, is the planet of transformation, death, rebirth, regeneration, which we're going to talk a bit about. Um, it's the underbelly of society. It's the dark side. They sometimes call it Hades. Um, they, it's, it's, I, I see it as almost the plumber of the zodiac. So when somebody has a Pluto transit, it generally means that um, things that haven't been looked at in the past are revealed. The underbelly is revealed. The dark side is revealed. Secrets are revealed. And this has been happening for the last year. It's been leading up to this. Okay. Um, so it's also the planet that that's, um, represents power. So when the two of these come together, it's a bit like an implosion. It's basically um, the collapse of structure. The death of structures, Pluto, death, Saturn, structures, um, the birth, birth, death, birth, regeneration of those structures. So that's what's been happening up until now. Um, it was only a one time conjunction where they come together once at the same degree, but we're still definitely feeling the effects of it. It's not gone away. So a lot of people ask me, when's this going away? Um, or when's this transit going to be over? It's not a cut and dried thing. It's energy. Imagine energy. Imagine waves of energy or waves in the sea. It's very difficult to see a starting point and an end point. Um, Jupiter, which is the one that's now come and joined the party, 
is what we call a beneficial planet. So it's a planet that bestows wealth and blessings and abundance on us, generally. That's the, the, the high side of Jupiter. All planets have got a shadow as well. The high side of Jupiter is the truth seeker, the light giver, the sharer of light, the sharer of information, the, the revealer, if you like, of the truth. Okay. So when Pluto comes and joins, or Jupiter comes and joins with Pluto, it's basically bringing possibly truth to what's underneath the surface, so bringing it out. The other possibility, which is what's happening tomorrow morning, which is we're in now, is that um, it's a portal. It's an opening portal of light to come in to actually work um, with the darkness. So Pluto being the darkness, Jupiter being the light. So you could see it like that. So we're seeing it like that. We're, used to, we're seeing it as a gateway. And why not? Because the more of us that can get together and meditate and bring in the light, the better. Because we really, really need it right now. Um, the, 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 the exact Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions is happening tomorrow. And then again at, at the end of June, 30th of June. And then again in November, November the 5th. And these almost seem like waves and they're kind of peaks of the wave. So quite a lot of astrologers are seeing this as a peak uh, in this virus thing. Um, and possibly again in June and possibly again in November. The reason for that is that in April they always kind of start moving backwards. So they're not just going forwards and then leaving us, leaving, leaving the, the equation. They're going backwards and forwards throughout the year. So the way I see that is that this isn't going to be a quick thing. Um, it's going to stick around a bit. And I think that towards the end of the year we should be starting to see some light. Um, it's not to say that the virus is necessarily going to be around the whole year. But the ramifications of it to our social systems, to our, our economic system, that's going to have longer effects. I think of that we all know. Um, and finally, sort of in January next year, we should be seeing the sort of the deepest change. And at that point, I believe that we're going to have to make choices of, um, you know, do we stay with the known or walk into the unknown? Because our tendency as human beings is to favor the known, and which is why we're so scared of death, which we're going to talk about. Death is really just the passing away of something that's done its time. And the old world as we know it needs to change. And that is what I believe is happening. And I don't think it's going to be the same again after this. So what John and I really hear to share with you and to work with you over the next few weeks, months, whatever it is, is to actually say, are we going to open to this change? Or are we going to resist it? Because resisting it is going to be causing the suffering. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's about it for the astrology. And just um, just on one thing, I think a lot of people see Jupiter as the this amazing planetary energy that's going to swoop down and just sort everything out. And everything's going to be fantastic again. And um, it's not really like that, that, the way I see it. Maybe it is. Great. Let's hope it is. But I don't see it like that. Um, I think that when we attach to expectation of everything being okay, the way it was before, um, that's when people suffer. So Viktor Frankl, when he was working, you know, he worked, he lived in the, uh, he was alive in the concentration camps, and he's a psychologist, and he said afterwards that the people who had expectations of it getting better were the ones that didn't make it. The ones that accepted and were in the moment were the ones that made it. So I think that there's a lot of acceptance um, coming up for us, surrender and deepening. This is a deepening for us to deepen our true connection at a deep level. So if we've been saying, yeah, oh, we're spiritual and we do this and we do that, this is a real testing time to say, well, where are your roots? Are your roots in the systems or that are changing all the time? Or are they in something deeper and unchanging? Over to you, Mr. Homewood. <laughs> this reminds me of um, the work I did 10 years ago at, um, at 
towards what 2007, 2008, 2009, through to 2012. Um, people were very interested then and very fearful for the end of the world because there was some American guy who started a whole thought pattern that the Mayan calendar ended in December 2012 and the world was obviously going to end. And that was just not true at all. And the Mayans had 18 different calendars and no calendar ended in 2012. It was just some guy had a dream and that was what came to him in the dream. And um, everyone was very fearful about the ending of the world on the one hand, but people were very um, excited about the ending of the world on the other. So they had their fear and they had the excitement. Now excitement is actually laced with fear as well. It's like enthusiasm laced with fear. And, um, you know, the, the talks that I gave back then, and it's up on YouTube if you want to have a look, was that, no, this is not the ending of time. Um, it's not the ending of the world. It's not this new utopian uh, world that's going to be born. It's actually a gradual transformation of consciousness. And we've been going through that for the last 10 years as a species. If you just look at your own life, look at your own values, how have your values shifted in the last 10 years? You'll probably find there's a great awareness now of global issues, of global warming, of ecology, than there was 10 years ago. We have shifted both collectively and individually in our, in our, in our awareness of what is more real than the old world. And this is what we're going through again now. We're going through a process of massive transformation once again. And the analogy that I used back then, which I'm going to share with you with you now again, is the analogy of a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. Now, if you just think about what a caterpillar envisaged or envisages itself as a successful caterpillar in the future, it envisaged itself maybe as a faster, sleeker, um, more powerful um, caterpillar, it envisages itself maybe dominating the whole bush and, you know, eating all the leaves and there being an ever-present, you know, abundance of leaves for it to munch through. Um, I believe the figure is that a caterpillar eats about 300 times its body weight in its lifetime. So it munches through a lot of food. And if you think of all of us in our lives, how much we consume in our lives, it's just truly amazing. And uh, what happens is that the caterpillar gets more and more dysfunctional. It gets fat, it becomes sluggish, and it actually eventually moves into the cocoon. And this is a stage that we are now going through, I believe. And in the cocoon, the systems that it knew collapse. The legs that it walk, walked on before, crawled on, dissipate. They turn to mush. The body turns to mush. Every organ in its body completely goes to slush, caterpillar gunk. And through a magical transformation process, we know that even the genetics of the, um, of the caterpillar completely resolve themselves, dissolve themselves. And then there's a new genealogy that emerges miraculously. That was only, the mechanism for this was only discovered a few years ago. And uh, what emerges from the cocoon after a protracted um, state of sort of the dark night of the soul, if you want to put it that way, for the caterpillar, it definitely is. Um, what emerges doesn't have these millions of legs anymore. It doesn't have, uh, it's not a, a long, crawly thing anymore. It, it has these magnificent wings, these beautiful feelers in front. And it's a completely different insect to the one that went into the cocoon. Now, what actually happened in the cocoon is that the caterpillar died. Mm. That's what happened. It died. Completely disintegrated. And it had to disintegrate for the new to be born. You know, the, the other analogy is in order to make an omelette, you've got to break the eggs. You've got to break the eggs and change them into an omelette. And uh, what, what a lot of people want is they want just an improved version of the old world. They want, you know, like uh, money to be more abundant and they want, uh, you know, chocolate not to make you fat anymore or whatever the story is. I'm being a bit uh, um, facetious there. But 
we, we don't really want death. We fear death more than anything else. We fear disillusion. We fear dissolvement. We fear collapse. But we have to go through that in order for the new to be born. Because the new cannot be born of the old. It can only be born out of the chaos that comes as a result of death. And this is what we have to face individually and collectively on planet Earth. We have to face the fact that yes, we are moving through very uncertain times. Where what we knew to be true in the past is not necessarily going to serve us very well in the future. The identity that we built up for us in the past needs to be let go and released now. The um, previous podcast we did um, on Thursday, no, last Sunday, um, we, I shared a clip which didn't show up at the time, but I've now inserted it into the video on YouTube, and it's also available on our journeysofawakening.com website. And in that, I explain about the matrix, and hopefully most of you have seen that model by now. But the matrix really is my uh, map of reality, explaining how we have a horizontal plane of existence. This is what's called the fourth dimension. Three of space, one of time. And it's very, um, it's predicated on time and on mind and on fear. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. I am what I do. I am what I have. I am what other people think of me. Um, this, is, this is the sort of self-identity that we have. And we are looking to a future time with hope when everything is going to be resolved and sorted out and, uh, you know, we're going to have as many leaves as we want to, to munch. And that's, that's the old way, or that's the normal way, of seeing the world on this timeline. And we've busy been running, running, running so fast. And uh, through this um, pandemic that we're going through, which I say has been orchestrated um, by the cosmos, and cosmos means order, so there is an order, a higher order, that is orchestrating this transformation. And um, <clears throat> this has brought us to a point of stop, of pause, of reset. And uh, that is quite troubling for the human doing, because the human doing has its whole identity invested in the world of time and achievement, and also acquisition. And that's been pretty much brought to a halt, hasn't it? But in that, we're experiencing a beauty. A stillness. I mean, it's just so lovely to have the quietness around us. And uh, last night I went outside, and we live in Cape Town near Musenberg, and our skies are pretty clear here anyway. But last night I looked up at the sky, and those stars were oh. so, so bright. I mean, it was almost like being in the Karoo. They were, the sky was crystal clear. It was really, really beautiful. And so at the moment there is a clearing process taking place, and we... We see that the animals are reacting differently, differently in nature. We hear about the dolphins coming to the coasts now, not only in, in Italy, but all over the world, and, and the fish and the birds. And I noticed in, in you know, my own garden, there seems to be so many more birds now, so many more birds. And so there is a, there's a revitalization of the stillness of Mother Earth, of nature. Yes, there is a death taking place, and death is the world of commerce, the world of activity. And uh, with that, there is a dying of the old, the old way of being in the world. Uh, the mass consumer, consumerism that we've been through. And I can see that uh, the world we're going to be stepping into, we don't have a clue what it's really going to be. But all I can say is that it's not going to be the same as the one that we experienced. But then again, we are not going to be the ones that experience the old world as well. And I believe there's an intelligence in the universe that always looks after us. In every single moment, our needs are always met. Not in our wants, but our needs. Ask yourself a question if you look back in your life. Has there be, ever been a time when your absolute need in the moment was not met? And if you're really honest about that, you find that no. In the moment, your needs are always met. No matter how big the crisis, you are always looked after. Situations and miraculous events came about that just got you through that. Now that's that's living on the the horizontal plane, a very scary place to live, but it's normal. It's also mad, and it's now dysfunctional. 
So the other way which I share in that, uh, in that map of consciousness is when you start to live in the vertical plane. You can think of a cross, horizontal plane, chasing time, ruled by mind and fear, and the vertical plane, which is the intersection of the horizontal plane, is presence. You can look at um, the analogy of a, a movie. In the cinema, you have your film, 24 frames a second, always moving, always moving. And then you have the light shining through it. The light never moves. Without the light, there's no experience. But the light isn't the experience. The light is the awareness that allows you to have the experience. So you are this light of presence, this light of consciousness, shining through a story, a movement, a human doingness. And this part of us, this human doingness, is, a, is getting, going to become more and more dysfunctional. And it's going to, I think, if we live there, it's going to create more and more suffering for us, more and more anxiety for us. But however, if we come into the vertical plane, if we realize, no, we are the light of awareness. We are the light of awareness. We're not the human doing. We are the human being. And the being is the depth of life. And I mentioned in, in the last talk that Jesus said we have to dig deep and build our house on the rock. And he said, I want you to hear the abundance of life. Life is where? Life is not in the future, not in the past. It's now. It animates your body now. Your heart is beating now. You're breathing now. So what, what Jesus was talking about was aligning yourself with the depth of being. Not a story in the future, but the depth of being that's accessible to you right now. So what I'm seeing now is a collapse of the matrix of these two bubbles of past and future, forcing us through uncertainty into the present moment. And this, I believe, is the only sane way to get through these very challenging, very uncertain uh, times that we're moving through. Knowing that in the moment, in every single moment that you ever experience, you are looked after. All your needs will always be met. You do not have to worry. In fact, they're saying worry is praying for what you don't want. Give up that. Give up worrying. I gave it up a number of years ago. There's no point in worrying. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't benefit anything. It actually makes you age. It makes you stressed. You collapse your body's ability to deal with viruses, for example. We know that when you're stressed, your immune system is lowered. Not a good time to be stressed right now. Now is the time to be at peace, to be centered in the present moment, knowing that there is a higher order to what's going on, as much as the caterpillar cannot see it, the caterpillar cannot see the chaos that's taking place as anything good whatsoever. But there is a higher order. That higher order of intelligence comes in and reformats the molecules of the caterpillar and something magnificent emerges. We've got to trust that that intelligence that beats your heart, that digests your food, that right now is taking the oxygen from your lungs and delivering it to every single cell in your body with no intellectual activity on your part doing that. You, you don't know how to release hydrochloric acid into your stomach to dissolve your, your food, for example. You don't know how to beat your heart. You don't even know how to listen. Right now you are listening, but you don't know how to do that. You may be seeing us. You don't know how to operate the eyeball. You don't know how to do that. You don't know how to change light frequencies into electrical currents and then somehow you become aware of it inside the brain somewhere. No, there's a greater order of intelligence. And we have to trust that that same intelligence that brings a baby into the world, that takes two zygote cells and multiplies it after nine months, you have this beautiful baby that emerges. The parents think, oh, I made that baby. No, they didn't. Show me a mother who knows how to build a kidney or a liver or a lung. And a father who knows how to build a leg or an arm or an ear. No, no. We, we, we had five minutes of fun. That's all we did in that process. But it was life. It was this intelligence called universal consciousness life that actually got that baby to form. Now that same intelligence didn't leave us when we were born. It's with us our whole journey. And it's with us right now. It is, in fact, orchestrating this event. I mean, we have many conspiracy theories as to, you know, what happened. Did a, did a guy in China eat a bat? And is that why we all on lockdown now? No, we have all these different stories about what is going on. But I would say that as wrong as it is, there is a higher 
level of intelligence that's orchestrating all of this on purpose for the highest purpose of mankind. And Michelle mentioned from an astrological point of view, we have Jupiter, that is the planet of karma, is it? No, Saturn. Saturn. Saturn is karma. We are going through a cleansing process right now. Karma is not punishment. It's actually a cleansing process. It's a balancing process. Cleansing. And there are a lot of imbalances on earth right now that need to come into balance. And that is the process. And we can resist it. You know, the caterpillar can say, God, why is this happening to me? Why have I you know, been punished this way? Or it can surrender to that process and go through that transformation in peace. And that's the choice that we get um, to make right now. And this is leading me up to, I would think, the most important part of tonight's talk from, from my aspect, is that the realization that we are co-creators. We're not victims. We are co-creators. We are the universe. We are the cosmos. There's no separation between us and all the planets. As above, so below. The part of us that is separate in time and space is the part of us that's locked on the horizontal plane. The vertical plane is one. There's no separation there whatsoever. The beingness that I am is the same beingness that you are. It's the same beingness that, that Earth is, that Mother Gaia is. It's the same beingness. The physical world is a world of separation. And at that level, yes, we, we are separate. But we are the being part. And in that, we have creatorship. Even your name, if you say your name, for example, I can say, I am John. Now, the John is the human part. The John is the part on the horizontal plane. But the I am is pure presence. That's in the depth of life, in the vertical plane. And as such, the I am is the name of the creator. And as such, we now have a responsibility to access our creatorship and use this to co-create the new world that we want to see. The world on the horizontal plane is ruled by fear, false evidence appearing real. This is love. And our creatorship energy through love does not come from thinking, although thought is real, a real tool to be used, but the real energy is feeling, is feeling. Now, the mass media at the moment, what does it want us to feel? What, what is it peddling to us at the moment, the mass media? It's peddling fear. That is the horizontal plane. It wants to, us to keep stuck on the horizontal plane. So who owns the media? It's power brokers, people who have, have manipulated circumstances and situations their way for many hundreds of years, possibly thousands of years. But they have created um, a certain structure for themselves at the, which has benefited them immensely, the 0.01% of um, human beings who control the other 99.99% of human beings. They have invested heavily in the horizontal plane because that's where their power lies, in false evidence appearing real. Our power, power on the other hand, takes place in the vertical plane, in love. So their power is in fear and anxiety and ours is in presence and love. And they will use whatever tools that they have, which is the media, to control and to keep us stuck in anxiety and in fear. Because that way they control us. We know that if you want to do brainwashing, for example, what you do is you put the, uh, the, the victim into a very anxious state. When they're in an anxious state, you can control their mind. In a love-based state, you can't control people at all. There is no control in the vertical plane. And I believe that that the powers that be will do everything they can to distract you, as they have done for hundreds, if not thousands of years, distract you with the horizontal plane. I mean, from the moment we're born, we're programmed to think about the future, be responsible. It's all about the future, the future, the future, the future. And then you get to the end of your timeline and say, hang on a minute, when am I going to live? I didn't get a chance to live because I was always planning for the future. Now there's no more future. I'm about to pop out of my body. No, it's time to wake up now that our real um, creatorship is in the vertical plane, not in the story anymore, not in this world of fear and anxiety. And the power that we have within us is the power of creatorship over our feelings and emotions. This is the biggest secret of creation. 
is that it is your feelings which create. They have a real power within them. And if you are busy investing this power in fear and anxiety, you are feeding the matrix. If you choose, and you have to choose consciously with the prefrontal lobe of your brain, not with your reptilian brain, your, your programmed brain, your brain that is invested in fear, and that's the fight, flight, or freeze part of your brain, the old part of the brain, the, 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 the response, the sort of like, um, it responds to, to outside stimuli all the time. You've got to choose with your prefrontal lobe to choose what it is you want to experience in the future. If it's more fear, invest in fear. If it is love, if it is peace, if it is joy, if it is bliss, if it is connection, then choose presence. And invest your energy that you have. You have immense energy in you. Invest that in the world of love, in the feelings of love. As I said last time, we have two baskets. The one basket is fear, which promises you absolutely everything and delivers you nothing. The other basket of love promises you nothing, but delivers you everything ultimately and this is the choice that we're getting to make as a species because unlike a caterpillar which had absolutely no say in its process in the cocoon we do have a say right now we do have a say and we are because we're co-creators we have been given something unique to the humans and that's called free will to choose and right now the choice that we have to make is between the matrix which is fear-based and presence which is love-based and this meditation at 4.45 tomorrow morning is an opening portal for us to pour the emotion, the feeling in that we want to amplify. Because that's what Jupiter does. It amplifies. If we go into this in a state of fear, that fear will be amplified. If we go in with love, with joy, with gratitude, that will be amplified. And that will very much influence the future world that we're going to, to experience. This is our planet. This is our planet. And we have a say in the future of planet Earth. Now, love is a state of connection. Connection to everything and everyone. It's your true beingness. Love is to recognize yourself in the other and the other in yourself. In other words, to recognize the ocean in you and you in the ocean. To recognize... The mountain in you and you in the mountain. To recognize your worst enemy in you and you in your worst enemy. That's love. And love is the energy that dissolves the matrix. Where fear is about division. It's about separation. It's about me versus you. My kind, me, mine and my versus everything else outside of us. That's the old world. You know, if you think of uh, religion, I'm not knocking, knocking religion, but... Religion, the word means, or one of the meanings is to bind, to separate. And in fact, most of the major teachers, I mean Jesus particularly, taught love, connection, no separation. But because the mind can use fear to control people, and has used that to control people, it invested in, in the separation model. We are now coming to the connection model, connection. So this power that we have is a feeling of connection to everything and everyone. Part of that connection, believe it or not, is even with those dark forces, those forces of manipulation that have brought this about. Those 0.0 whatever percent of the population that control most of the wealth. Feel the love for them. They just lost souls. They're souls who lost their way. They are mentally ill. To acquire more than you need is mental illness. And they have become very deranged, very mentally ill. And our time is not to, right now, is not to have any anger towards the system. Have no anger within you. Because if you do have anger and you go under the amplification of Jupiter, that anger gets multiplied. It's to feel love and compassion for even the worst of humanity on earth at this stage. Forgiveness is key to our evolution, to our healing. Forgiveness of everything, including yourself and your past and all the regrets and guilt that you have. Forgive, let it go. It doesn't serve you anymore. This is a time of embracing the isness of this moment. 
that is the energy which we need to focus on as we move through this time, particularly right now, tonight, and tomorrow morning with that meditation. Focus on creating within you this massive outpouring of gratitude to life, to Mother Nature, to the Divine, in whatever form you want to see that. And one thing I'd also like to just share with you is the human part of us is a part that deals with stuff, with things. And the human mind has made love into a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be bought, it can be sold, it can be given, it can be received. You know, it comes wrapped up in a Cadbury's chocolate bar. You know, that's what sold to us. You know, it's a product. Love is a product. I mean, look at Valentine's Day. It's a product. Love is not a thing. Things occur on the horizontal plane. The vertical plane is about no thingness. And love occurs in this plane. Love is not a thing. So it cannot be given or received. Now that's a big one because a lot of us want to give love. We want to give love. And that is a misperception about what love is. Love cannot be given because love is everywhere all at once. However, from our perspective, from a human perspective, we can block love. And the way we do that is with our thinking mind. Our fear-based thinking mind blocks love. Blocks the perception of love. And so at this time, what we need to do is become more open. This is an opening to love. Not a giving love. That's a human, oh, I gave love today, therefore I can, you know, have value and I can sleep tonight because I gave, you know, some love to the world. That gives you a sense of uh, egoic um, one-upmanship, you know, on, on the world. I, I'm more giving and love, you know, it gives you another mental state, a mental identity for yourself. But this process is not about that. It's an opening. And as we open ourselves, open our hearts, open our awareness, love is able to flow through us with no doing. In the Tao Te Ching, I think it was, it says that the Tao does nothing, but leaves nothing undone. Love does nothing, but leaves nothing undone. We do not have to do this love thing. We have to be the love. Gandhi said, you have to be the change you want to see in the world. This is a case of being, opening to love and allowing it to flow through you. We are all channels. We can be channels for fear or channels for love. And I would urge all of you listening tonight to make a choice, an irrevocable choice right now, that come what may in the circumstance of your life, you will remain open. You will choose openness than closedness. I need to protect myself. Well, yourself is not this. Yourself is everything. You are the world. You are the other. You are the plants. You are the insects. You are the birds. You are all the stars in the cosmos. That's you. Don't close yourself. Open your awareness to the magnificence that you really are. This is a time, folks, for opening and allowing love to flow. So that was my main message for, for tonight. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, and I think that's, that's such a good point, because I think a lot of us, especially in times of crisis like this, tend to close and restrict. Um, the other night we did a, a live call on feelings, and... Um, not getting stuck in the feeling, but it's important that you're able to actually feel the feelings that come up as well right now because um, fear does come up and the mind does tell you stories and you do get anxious about how you're going to pay the rent and about the job and about the house and about everything. So I think it's really important that we feel what comes up without judgment. Um, we've got it. You can actually look on, our, on the YouTube channel on our website. We've actually posted it there. Um, you can actually just feel the feelings that you're feeling so that they actually wave through you. They pass through you like a wave and then go back to that vertical plane that John was talking about. One of the tools that he taught me and us, many of you that have been on John's workshops, was if you've got the vertical plane and the horizontal plane, and you can imagine that you've got a ring around it and it's a steering wheel. When your mind goes... Hearing off into the future, you just breathe, 
two conscious breaths, one conscious breath even, and bring yourself back into that vertical plane, which is now, which is that present. And it really does work. It's, you just keep course correcting yourself. So if your mind goes into the past, you go, oh, it's gone, I've gone into the past. And you bring it back to the, to the middle. And what I'm finding that when I do that, um, there's a space in between the thought because I'm noticing that I've gone there and I can bring myself back. It's the same with feelings. Um, if we can notice that we're feeling sad or anxious or worried or upset or irritated, then we are not that feeling. We are just noticing it. We're feeling the feeling. And it's waving, passing through us like a wave. As opposed to um, trying to be positive when you don't feel positive, which means that you're pushing it underneath the surface, that's not healthy either. So... I think that that's really important that we actually don't judge the feelings and think, oh, you know, I shouldn't be feeling this, I'm supposed to be spiritual. Well, yeah, we, we also have a human side. And so it's just to feel those and, and bring it back, but bring it back to presence. Because that will, it, it does, it just helps you to actually move through it. Yeah. yeah. So here we have the choice of, again, mm -hmm. of, of fear and love. Um, mm -hmm. False evidence appearing real, always mm -hmm. wanting to understand things. Um, judge them, um, get them towards us or push them away. That, that's the judgmental mind on the horizontal plane. Love, on the other hand, is very, very different. And these feelings that are coming up for lots of people at the moment, there are feelings, you know, if you're contained inside a house um, and maybe there's other people there, you, people are going to push your buttons. And uh, because you're in a state of maybe heightened anxiety, maybe, um, they are also maybe ha having to go through certain emotions. And so there will be maybe times of, of conflict in, in those homes. Hopefully not. But even if they're not, within yourself, there will be emotions coming through. This is a period of cleaning and cleansing um, eons of experience. So you may find um, um, emotions, feelings coming up from your childhood. Maybe feelings coming up from where you don't even know, maybe past lives, who, who knows where they're coming from. But there are feelings surfacing, surfacing right now. The mind on the horizontal plane would want to either suppress them or understand them. Mm -hmm. That is not what you do with feelings. Love, as I said earlier, is a state of allowing, a state of accepting. Accept the feeling. Allow it to yeah. be there. It is in the allowing not the understanding, but in the allowing that dissipates the feeling. It dissipates. It goes with no understanding at all. You allowed it to come up and it was healed. You see, healing comes from feeling. Feeling is healing, not understanding. Just allowing the emotion to be there dissipates it and heals it. And I believe one of the most beautiful things we can give to each other is that is to actually allow the person to have the feeling without fixing it without suppressing it without shutting them down to actually just hold a space for somebody to process a feeling and not take it personally because that stuff is coming up and it's mirroring us and we have a new a full moon coming up on wednesday which is is the mirror and it's going to be quite a biggie so um this is building towards that. So it's just to, just to, I think what we, you know, all of us want to be loved unconditionally. That's, it's just a human, it's what we want. We want to be loved unconditionally. So I think it starts with loving ourselves unconditionally, which means I'm having a feeling here. It's not comfortable, but I love myself anyway, completely. And this person that I'm with is having a feeling or having a moment, and that's okay. I love him or her unconditionally. And I think that that, is, that goes a hell of a long way to actually bringing light into the planet and into our homes and our relationships. And this is like a squeezing. We're being pushed together and squeezed to see what comes out. And stuff's going to come out because we're under this restrictive squeeze. But it needs to. Um, so dreams, you might be dreaming and having really strange dreams. That's normal. It's, it, that's what's going to happen. Um, so whatever comes out, just see that sort of that plumbing thing. 
the plumbing rods have gone underneath and it's sucking up everything so that you can actually wash it away. Um, but it's never that pretty. It's often not that pretty. But that's okay. It's part of the process, I think. So it's... Um, yeah, it's just to that, that analogy of being squeezed. You know, if you yeah. squeeze an orange, what comes out? Pear juice? No, pear juice doesn't come out. You don't get mango juice either. Why don't you get mango juice when you squeeze an orange? Because what's inside comes out when something gets squeezed. So, for example, this situation that's going on in the world, this pandemic and this economic collapse possibly, um, is squeezing people tremendously to see mm-hmm. maybe your stocks and shares go down or your company collapse or whatever. That's going to do the squeezing. And then what the mind will do, it will lay the blame of how you're feeling on that. It'll outsource how you're feeling to circumstances. No, no, no. The circumstances are squeezing you. And what's already on the inside, possibly anger, possibly fear, will come to the surface. And that is not bad. That's good. As long as you allow it to come up, it can be dissipated and healed. And you never need to feel that again. You never need to feel fear and anxiety and anger again, once it's been totally released from within you, out, dissolved, gone. Mm. Um, What did I I do this? Have you got any questions? Any questions from people? We've got some thank yous here. Questions. Any questions, you're very welcome to put them in the thread. Um, I think I'm going to read this thing that I've got. So, the process we're going through at the moment is a process of death and dying, as I said. And, you know, one of the things that I do is public speaking uh, training. And uh, people would, they say, would rather die than go on a public speaking course or speak in public. And the reason is because the ego is going to die. You know, when I get up there and speak in front of other people, you know, my ego is going to be threatened and I don't want that. So this fear of death underlies so many things that limit us in life, the fear of death and dying. And it's something that's really been brought to the surface at the moment with this this pandemic, um, as we mentioned earlier. Maybe I'm going to get it and die. Maybe someone I love is going to get it and die. Um, Maybe my business is going to die. Maybe the economy is going to die. So we're having to face this fear of death. This is a very, very real fear. Now, the caterpillar going into the cocoon, I don't know what's going through its head at that time, probably nothing. But if it was human, it would be fearful of the dying process. And I would suggest that that is not a very healthy way to enter this transformation process that we're going through this year. This is a big transformation process. Not an event, but a, a process. And we don't know when it's going to end. And... And that's another thing in that, you know, the mind always wants to know the future on the horizontal plane. When you start to live in the vertical plane, it does not matter what happens in the future. It does not matter that we sit in this cocoon for the next 10, 20 years. It does not matter because I'm present. I'm in the light and I'm in love with this moment. And my needs are always met in the present moment. Unlike living on the horizontal plane where I have to worry about my needs, when I'm in the vertical plane, there isn't any worry. And your needs are met miraculously when you're in this place. Mm -hmm. So it's not about wanting this to be over in the future. When you're in the vertical plane, there's no wanting. It's the one thing you give up is desire. Desire for things to be other than what they they are. And part of this process is to face our fears. Mm -hmm. And facing death is a biggie for most Mm -hmm. people. But what is real cannot be threatened. Only that which is unreal, only that which is transitory and in form, for example, the economic system, that can collapse because it's transitory. Every economic system has always collapsed. Every culture has always collapsed. That's a given. They say that that the life that we experience as a human being, I think Wayne Dyer said, that this life that we know ourselves to be is a sexually transmitted terminal disease. Because it is. But what is real cannot die. So the real essence of who you are, which is being, cannot be threatened by death. And if you come out of the matrix, out of the horizontal way of living your life, into the vertical plane, the fear of death will no longer run your 
life or run your awareness anymore. And out of that loss of the fear of death, you can truly live, truly live your life. And there's something that uh, came to, to Michelle today. It's, it's a beautiful um, piece of work and prose. Yeah. What would you call it? It's a, it's a write-up. It, it's by an author. It was sent to me by a very dear friend of mine. And it's just, uh, it really, really resonated with me and John. And we just thought that it's so apt with what's actually going on right now that we would share it with you. It's quite long. So you can just listen, close yeah. your eyes if you like, and then after that we'll have a little chat and then go into meditation. Yeah. So you might like to just sit back in your chairs right now and use this almost as a meditation to guide you. Um, beautiful piece, and I think it'll address some of the issues which we've spoken about tonight, but it really is worth it. So just sit back in your chairs, close your eyes maybe a little bit, and just listen to Michelle as she goes through this. It's called It's Time to Stop Avoiding Death by David Cates. You can't have the life you want without letting go of the life you have. I've been stunned by how thoroughly a tiny virus, barely, no, barely 0.00001 of an inch across, has brought our human world screeching to a halt. In a few short months on a global scale, it's kicked over all the bedrocks, nation by nation, and clear, clearly revealed the dark, wriggly underworld, hiding just out of sight, Pluto. <laughs> I'm saying. That sense of unease we've had about governments and politicians, scientists and institutions, economies built on hope and lies, nature gasping from our poisons, societies splintering into dry tinder, all that is laid bare. And in the deafening silence of shutdown, there's nowhere else to look. The veil has been lifted. The world has turned upside down. The roots are rotten. This is what we have become. Some of us still sneak out onto the streets. Some pull the Netflix covers over the eyes. But as the days wear on in quarantine, we're being forced to see our lives, our jobs, our relationships and ourselves without those layers of frantic busyness and protective gauze. Exposed, naked, squinting at the sun, unsure who we are, uncertain what to do. I've been meditating lately on the vast hidden networks of nature the mycelium, bacteria, microbiota, and yes, the viruses, the original organisms from which complex life forms evolved, and likely the ones who will take over again when humans disappear from this world, adapting to eat up our plastic pollution and radioactive waste, and more immediately, to compost our physical bodies as each of us dies. Nature is a web, innumerable networks in constantly shifting yin-yang balance. Death is an essential element in that balance. Embracing death brings us back into harmony with the underlying game as it's played in this world, at every scale, from insects to empires. Resisting death puts us at odds with the whole natural order. These past few years I've been pulled into an underworld initiation. I accompanied first my sister and then my mother through the, month, the final months of their lives sitting with them as they took their last breaths. Death is ordinary, terrifying, and beautiful all at once. It cracks our hearts open in a way that nothing else can. So before this new virus appeared, I'd already made friends with the dark and wriggly worlds under those flipped over rocks. My naked skin had goosebumped into the cold shadows. I'd felt the grief pooling in my lungs and seen the world strangely magnified through my tears. I may be a bit further along the path than some of you, but maybe not. For in the bright light of these revelation times, many of us are showing our hidden battle scars and secret hurts. The ancestral wounds we carry, the loves we've lost, all the tiny deaths we've not yet mourned or celebrated. Apocalypse, the uncovering. What happens when the emperor has no clothes? What happens when I lose my job and my social place? What happens if I'm locked in a house alone with my family, when I can't get food or medicine, when one of us starts coughing, when my competent identity crumbles and you see who I really am underneath the facade? I've been reluctant to speak these questions out loud. 
Many people have reached out to me for soothing, for certainty, for reassurance that we'll soon be back to normal. Uncharacteristically, I've been holding my tongue. I don't think we can go back to normal. Forgetful as we human creatures are, I can't unsee this revelation. On every level, from the meta and systemic to relational and personal, this is where we are now, in the midst of the sixth mass extinction possibly, pounded by climate change with 20,000 children dying of hunger every day on this planet. Much of our generalized panic about the situation, I believe, is misplaced. We're focused on human personal deaths, our own or loved ones. But when I step back, relax my gaze, and focus on the bigger picture, it's clear what's really dying. Our old normal world has been rotting on its deathbed for decades. That stench in my nostrils is not from a few thousand, or possibly even a few million human bodies. The social order has already broken down. Politics is lethal and nature is drowning in poisons. Underneath the rocks, below the foundations, the roots are rotten and everyone knows it. Our avoidance of death hasn't actually stopped the world from dying. It's just left us delusional. Little children with our eyes squeezed shut, fingers plugging our ears, tongues babbling, no, 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 no. The coronavirus has burst that dam of denial. It's an equal opportunity killer, impacting every nation, rich and poor alike. No more bullshit, no more hiding. Death is everywhere. As we quarantine in place, isolated in our homes, the truth couldn't be plainer. We cannot survive alone. We have got to come together. We're social creatures, relying on each other for food, healing, touch, kindness, understanding, information, and a thousand other services. Without others, we're doomed. And as this current situation makes it abundantly clear, as the virus passes from person to person, from hand to mouth to lungs, we're also doomed with others. Doomed if we do, doomed if we don't. That's the basic fact of life that we've forgotten in our modern go, 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 scrambling for survival world, the horizontal plane. Life is short, death is certain. Here it comes. I've been short and ruthless with my cl closest friends and students. I've made peace with death. You won't find peace with this virus until you do too. Certainly protect yourselves and others in the way that you can. Don't be foolish. No need to race but be f towards death. And also don't be foolish thinking that you can beat it forever. Let's take this precious time out of time while the world is holding its shocked breath. The rocks are kicked over and the curtains pulled back on the Wizard of Oz and look deeply into why we're also terribly frightened of dying. So frightened of dying that we're willing to hide in our houses, let the doctors and nurses do our dirty work without protective gear, abandon our grandparents to die alone in nursing homes. So afraid of dying that we hand our power over to despots and sacrifice a world worth living in together. This is a moment of truth. This tiny enemy we're trying to defeat is just another face of death. Don't worry, death has millions more. The entire natural world for billions of years has been an intricate, ever-changing dance of life and death. That's the game here on this planet. We're all just borrowing material from other life forms to make our own bodies. They dance together for a number of years and then they decay and are recycled. It's a beautiful system when we surrender to it. So many cells and atoms and microbes come together to support my personal creation. So many beings give themselves to feed and nourish us every day. When I stop and really feel that gift, I'm overwhelmed with love and gratitude. But rather than live with humble gratitude and die with grace, we humans get selfish. Personally, relationally, economically, politically, we want to grab and hoard, hoard and hold on forever. And in so doing, we miss the point. We may gain a few years, but we lose our hearts and souls. We can clearly see that it's in, in the selfish 0.1% who hoard more wealth than they could ever use. We see the results in our collective greed as it kills off entire species and trashes the living biosphere. We see that greed and fear strangle our own lives and relationships. Me, 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 me. We may have separate bodies, but we are not desert, designed to live or die alone. For better or worse, we are part of an intricate, unimaginable, mysterious whole. 
and when we turn away from death, we lose our connection to that hole. This is beautiful, this part here. When my mother died and the muscles in her face let go, her individual personality vanished. The twinkle in her eyes was gone, the way she smiled, the tilt of her head. But in their place, the bones revealed themselves. And then at the, in that distinct marble sculpture, the slope of the forehead, the thrust of the jaw, I saw her mother and her mother's mother and her mother's mother's mother. She was clearly part of something bigger, a temporary form borrowed for a handful of years, one face of a lineage that stretches back for millennia. The rest was compost and ash returned to the gift, to the earth, gifts now available for other creatures to create their own turn in the world. I want to be that let go, that surrendered to everything, life, death, love, fear, all the beauty in this unfathomable mystery. I want to enjoy my, sun, my time in the sun and then enjoy my time in the dark, dreaming night. I want to remember my place in the whole. All the best things in my life were unpredictable surprises. They came when I surrendered and let life take me somewhere new. New love, new work, new place in the world, sometimes even a new sense of self. The trick, I believe, is not holding on to what life has already given me. When my time comes, early or late, ugly or beautiful, I want to surrender again and let death take me somewhere unfathomably new. Not much more to go. I wish the same grace for you. To turn towards an apocalypse. Curious, open, not knowing who you are. Loving all that you've been given. Maybe scared, maybe not. Ready to let go of that old familiar world and begin to assemble from the scra strange scraps and compost and imaginal cells all around you and inside you something humble and connected and new. Reach out to others. Share your heart, your joys, your fears. Give your gifts. Connect to something bigger than yourself, human and more than human too. Embrace the unknown. Be willing to die. A new world can't come until we finally let go of this one. We can let a tiny virus do the heavy lifting for us. We can wait for the next virus and the next. Or we can push through this birth canal together. A few days before my mom died, when she was getting frustrated and frightened and losing her anchors to reality, I told her, you're doing such a great job, mom. You've never tried to die before, and this is all new to you. I think you're doing this perfectly. She smiled the most glorious little girl smile, and content with herself, he all choked up, finally stopped fussing with the blankets and let go. And as she died, she showed me that death is not the enemy here. Death is a doorway to love. In the same way that birth blows hearts open and changes lives forever, so does death. Don't turn away. Don't turn away from all that's dying. Face it. Feel it. Mourn it. Grieve it. Let it blow your heart open. This is the doorway to a new world. Here in your lost and scared and grieving heart. This is the opening. We've never done this before. But now the lights are on. And we can see where to begin. Thank you, Michelle. That was absolutely beautiful. And uh, if you anything like us, your heart would have opened quite a lot while uh, Michelle was reading that. The transition from the horizontal plane to the vertical plane is a transition, a walk through a doorway. And that doorway above the doorway is written the word surrender. Surrender to your fears. Surrender to your anxieties. Surrender to everything. Give up future. Give up past. Surrender it all. And that way you come back to the certainty of presence. And in that you open the portal for love to flow, for life to flow. Michelle's going to um, you're going to do a meditation yeah. shortly. Mm -hmm. So the meditation tomorrow morning at 4.45 globally is really important for amplifying the 
this energy we have within us, the energy of love, the energy of grace, the energy of bliss, the energy of gratitude, the energy of forgiveness. So I would suggest that all of you have some affirmation with you tomorrow morning as you do that meditation. Affirmation is, is a, a statement that might not be completely true in your awareness, but the more you say it, it becomes true. And an affirmation, I believe, should always start with the with the name of the Creator, which is the I Am. And um, we have an affirmation which we'd like to share with you tonight, which you can use maybe tomorrow. Um, it's, it's a good affirmation, very powerful affirmation. You can have your own affirmation as well, but it's a good idea to, to have an affirmation. And um, as Michelle is going to do this guided visualization, now you can just keep this affirmation in mind, and as you go through your sleep sleep time and when you do the meditation tomorrow morning if you can keep this this affirmation in mind what it will do is it'll open you and allow love to flow through you to clear away the darkness so and i don't know i think this is probably on reverse is it it's, <laughs> it's on reverse so what okay you'd have to switch it around i should have printed it back to front it's i am in love. So the way I want you to see that is there's an ocean of life, an ocean of love around us. You're surrounded by it. But you have a membrane. You have a polarized membrane around you. A polarized membrane created by uh, preferences, by judgments, by emotions. And our job is to release that polarization through surrender. And to realize that you are in an ocean of love. So when we say that I am in love, you picture yourself opening, releasing the membrane, and becoming one with this beautiful ocean of love. So just say it now with me. I am in love. Let's try that again. I am in love. And when you do this, add the feeling. The feeling is the really important part. You know when you're in love, you feel open. You feel good. You feel warm. That's the feeling that you add with this affirmation, particularly tomorrow morning as we do this powerful world meditation. Yeah, and I think it'll be powerful just for us to do it here as well, because, I mean, this is already forming, it's already there. So we've got a beautiful group here together, and I think we're more powerful than we know. When we get together in groups, it's incredibly powerful. The energy, the energy tomorrow morning is only in slightly incremental more powerful than now. Yeah. So this this it's energy that we're powerful. in right now is really, is, is it. So yeah. use this as an opportunity to feed the world that you want to live in. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to light a little candle here. And if you've got one at home, it's a good idea to to light a, a candle. And we're just going to spend uh, 10 minutes, is it? Yeah, it may be a little bit longer. We'll mark okay, we might go a bit over time. Yeah. Yeah, we've so, got anywhere to go. So. <laughs> yeah. You're not like rushing out anywhere, are you? Yeah. So we're going to do this meditation now. We're just going to rearrange our desk here and uh, put up a... A candle for for us all. It works. So in the meantime, you can just start to settle yourself and start to make yourself comfy. Really make yourself comfy, cozy. Get into a posture that's comfortable for you. That you don't feel that you have to keep on moving. So just Let's sit in quietly. Okay, Let's see if it works. Go to the back one. And it will be too dark. Let's try. Yeah, that's nice. Is that too dark? Yeah. Still come through? Yeah. Let's check on there. Okay, that's perfect. Alright, so just settling down 
and breathing, just connecting with your breath. Gently, breathing normally, not trying to make it anything that it isn't. Breathing slowly now and rhythmically. Take three deep, deep belly breaths. So blowing your tummy out as you breathe in. And then bringing the air all the way up to your chest. And then on the out breath, blow the breath out and release. So breathing in slowly and rhythmically. And breathing out, possibly through your mouth. So blow the breath out. And on each out breath, see if you can relax your body more and more. So breathing in, blowing your tummy in, out. Bring that breath all the way up into your lungs, into your chest, and then releasing. On each release, just let go of a little bit more tension, anxiety, fear. So let's just start with our feet, breathing into your feet. And as you breathe into your feet, relax your feet. Make them heavy. Then breathing into your ankles, relax your ankles. Breathing into your shins. On the out breath, relax your shins. Breathing into your knees. And on the out breath, relaxing your knees. Then breathing into your thighs. And on the out breath, relaxing the thighs. So your legs are just relaxed. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just there. Breathing into your pelvic area. And on the out breath, just relax that whole area front and back. Breathing into your torso, front and back, all the way up from the lower back, all the way up to the shoulder blades. On the out breath, just relax the tension that you hold in your back. Breathing into your tummy, to all your organs. Up into your lungs, your chest, your diaphragm. And on the out breath, releasing. Breathing into your hands. And then just releasing. Noticing the energy that's flowing through your hands right now. You might feel it as a little bit of a tingle. That's the animating force that animates your body. It's who you really are. And bringing that energy and that breath up through your arms and releasing your arms, relaxing your arms. Breathing into your neck. And as you breathe out, relax the neck. Just relax it. And as you relax the neck, drop your shoulders. And then breathing into your face. That unique, one of a kind face. Breathing into your eyes, relaxing the little muscles around your eyes. Relaxing the muscles around your mouth your jaw, your ears, your whole scalp. Just bringing yourself into this moment, which is all there really is. And just briefly connect in with your body right now. In this very moment. Notice how you're feeling right now. And 
gently bring your attention or bring into your mind's eye a place from nature that you see as absolutely beautiful. It's a place of peace and beauty and safety. Could be a place that you know or somewhere in your imagination. But imagine being in that place from nature. See if you can make it as vivid as you can. Get a sense of the plants around you. Get a sense of the temperature, the time of day. You might feel the sun or the wind. There might be some water that you can run your hands through. There might be a vista that you can look out at. Really seep it in. See if you can feel the feeling that you feel for this beautiful place from nature. And as you seep it into your being, allow the feeling of love that you have for nature, for this beautiful, precious planet that we live on, who serves us, nourishes us, supports us, feeds us. Allow that feeling of gratitude to grow in your heart. And as it grows in your heart, soften your heart. See it opening like a pink flower. Let it just open and expand in gratitude for what we have and the gifts that we have from Mother Earth. And when you really feel that sense of gratitude, that sense of love, that sense of appreciation for the mother, for the mother that holds us, send that light, that feeling, that love down from your heart all the way through your feet. Like roots, send that into Mother Earth, right into the core of Mother Earth. Just keep sending it from your heart into Mother Earth. If your attention wanders, just bring it back to your breath. And as you continue to feed and send this energy into Mother Earth, see if you can sense her energy coming back into you. There's this beautiful give and take, this beautiful flow of energy between you and your heart and Mother Earth. And receive and give. And just let that flow continue. And then without stopping the flow, turn your attention. Imagine the sky above your head. Imagine it being daytime with a beautiful blue sky, expansive, little clouds scudding across, the sun warming you as you drift and float. And as you drift, it starts to get a little darker and you start to pass the Milky Way. You meander across the heavens. You're traveling easily and weightlessly, infinitely connected. One with the planets and the stars that swirl around you. Everything in perfect order and symmetry. Everything connected, including you. Realizing the infinity of space. And as you imagine yourself drifting along, Feel the gratitude that you have for this space, for Father Sky, if you want to call it that, for the Divine Masculine, your gratitude for endless potential, for the connection between everything, for the ability to communicate 
to hear, to speak. It travels on the air. Gratitude for the perfect motion of the planets, the sun, the moon, that gives us our days and nights and seasons. Feel the love and gratitude for this deep inside your heart. It might have a color, it might have a texture. Just feel what it feels like to open up your heart even more to receive the love and the gratitude that you have. As it flows back into you, you flow it out from your heart and it flows back into you. Send the love up and let it flow back. Let it flow back in the form of sparkling light energy coming in through the top of your head and moving through every bod, every organ, every cell, every molecule, every bone in your body, all the way through every single part of you, clearing out what needs to be cleared, making space for the new. Bring that light energy all the way down through the bottoms of your feet and then the Mother Earth energy from the bottoms of your feet all the way coming up, all the way out from the feet up to the top of the head and out the top of the head. And then bring your attention to your heart. That place which is the connection between you and everything else. Connecting with the light from above and the light from below. And bringing them together in the middle of your heart in a single rose-colored flame of light. Put your shoulders back, soften your breath, open your heart even more. This is the place where there is no separation, where we're at one with each other, where we are one with all that is. Keep softening your heart, keep opening, keep allowing the feeling of love to grow. Allow the light that's there, that beautiful rose-colored flame, to get brighter and bigger. Feel it as it expands and grows and starts to radiate. Nothing you have to do, just being here. In total presence, nowhere to go, nothing to do, in love, interconnecting through your heart with all the hearts of life everywhere. This is your true home. And say the words to yourself, I am in love. I am in love. Last time, I am in love. Stay connected to the light inside your heart and know that you can return to this place over and over again as often as you need to. Whenever you need to, it only takes a minute or two. This right here is the reality. And this is the doorway to the new world. So just feeling gently into that heart space, that light in the heart. Setting the intention to return to this place as often as you can over the next while. Consciously commit to that. Returning to this place will strengthen that taproot. It will help you to navigate all the changes that might be ahead of us with grace and ease in a surrendered way. And then gently bring your attention back to your breath. 
take three deep breaths, filling up your lungs. And bringing yourself back into your body. You might rub your fingers together. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's a wonderful space to go to bed um, from, isn't it? This place of peace and love, being in love. I'm sure our sleep tonight will be infinitely better than it has been over the last few weeks now that we're in the centered beautiful place I'd just like to end uh, with a, a poem a short poem from i think it's hafiz it's mm -hmm. a little poem i say to myself every morning as a, as a prayer for my day i am a hole in the flute that the christ's breath blows through listen to my music so that's really saying that you are the emptiness. You are the emptiness through which the breath of life, which is the Christ, the love of the divine, flows. And the music that's created is an expression of your life. Bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. We will put a copy of tonight's uh, satsang, if you want to call it satsang on the journeysofawakening.com website. We'll try and get it up by tomorrow evening if possible. Um, we will also put a copy of that beautiful prose that uh, Michelle read to us. It really is absolutely wonderful. And we will also put up um, a slide um, giving you seven tools to use right now to anchor you through this stage of transformation with greater presence and greater peace. So do go onto the website. Um, we have got um, a special page up there. It's called, what is it called? It's resources page. It's our treasure chest. We call it our treasure chest. But it's under resources. And the website is journeysofawakening.com. There's no charge. So just go there and there's already some stuff there. We're filling it with um, interesting, inspirational stuff as we go. And then we'd also like to see you possibly again and um, we're going to do one of these live um, Facebook events on Wednesday night it's the full moon uh, on Wednesday and it's a biggie so we'll just see what comes up and if you've got any questions and you want to join us you're very welcome to um, and that's at uh, 7.30 isn't 7 it? 7.30 on 7 Wednesday. it's an hour, just an hour yeah. on Wednesday so yeah. it's half past 7 till half past 8 on the same page that you're on now mm -hmm. um, yeah We'd love to have you with us. If you have any questions or anything you'd like us to discuss, um, please just pop us a note in the in the box below, and we will we will look at that on on Wednesday night. If you enjoyed tonight, tell your friends to join us on Wednesday night. I think the, this is a time of coming together, of connecting through community. So we'd like to build a journeys of awakening community, where we focus on uh, on the solution rather than on the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bless everyone. you.